On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to recreate this very cool award-winning responsive type effect with Webflow without using code. Let's do this. Hey there, designer friends. What is up? My name is Ron Segal. Welcome back to Flux. Every once in a while, we do kind of a recap of really nicely designed website. And a lot of times in the comments, I see that they're asking me, well, can we do this with Webflow? And now I wanna take one of the websites that we show you and break down how I would recreate the same effect with Webflow. Now, it's true that for some of the things you do need you know, custom code to recreate these effects. But some of these things just require some creative thinking and understanding of the fundamentals. And that's the case in this website. So I just wanna show you. The nice thing that I love about this website is that everything that works here is just responsive to look amazing on any screen size. So as you can see, Hannah Langerman here, takes the full screen, the full width of the website. Even if our screen was this size, you can see that it would still take the full screen and then it kind of animates and it's always in the center and it's always kind of like just the right size and it just looks very cool and it's a pretty cool effect here. Um, there's tons of other cool responsive site on this website, but I just wanna, let's focus on this thing that's going on in the hero here and let's see. Let me show you, let's start with the end. So this is my recreation done in Webflow. The same thing happens here. And as you can see, the type is you know full size. You can change the screen size. The text will resize. The effect would still look pretty cool. And uh, it did take some creative thinking. And so I wanna recreate this with you and show you how to do this. Now, this is going to require some advanced uh, techniques and using of specifically responsive measurements. So looking at things like uh, viewport width and percentage base. So if you're a little bit overwhelmed or not sure how to you know approach this or why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, make sure to follow up with some of the earlier courses to focus on the fundamentals. Otherwise, just stick with me and try to see how we're gonna build this. So. I've got a new project here. Now, the first thing that you wanna see here is that we've got kind of a long, long background to scroll through to trigger this scrolling effect. And so what I wanna do first is just create some kind of a very long section that we can scroll through. I'm just gonna call this, let's say, long section. Um, and of course, you can put an image background like they have here. I'm just gonna, for the sake of it, I'm just gonna put some kind of a gradient so that uh, we can feel like we're scrolling through something. Um, let's pick up some nice purplish or something like this. Um, all right, and so now we have our gradient color. Let's say this is our gradient. And we want this thing to be two times our size, two times the height of our screen. So I'm gonna use 200 uh, vertical height and then on, not on the body, sorry. I did this on the body. So let's go back into our long section and give this 200 vertical height. And now as you can see, we have something to scroll through, right? It's two times the size, no matter what our screen size is. So we'll always have something to scroll through. So that is the first thing. Now, the, the next thing that you notice here is that the text is always um, adjusted. When you first load the website, it's always synced to the bottom or aligned to the bottom of the screen here. So basically what we need is to understand where the first screen, you know, this one is two screens height, but we do want to understand where the first screen ends. And so I'm gonna add another kind of an element here, a container, and I'm gonna call this, let's call this hero, uh, hero top, right? Um, in this one, I'm gonna make sure that it's 100 vertical height. So this is actually gonna make sure that we have one container that ends on, you know, without scrolling at all. So now I can align to the bottom of this thing, right? And let's bring an element that we can align to. So I'm, I'm gonna call this align to bottom, just so that we understand what we're trying to do here, just because I want the text to be within this thing. So to align this to the bottom, I'm gonna go to the hero top, I'm gonna turn it into a flex, and I'm gonna align to the bottom what we have there. So now we have this area here, which is aligned to the bottom. I'm actually gonna make sure that it, its width is 100%. 
And uh, yeah, now we have this. There's nothing in it, so we can't really see it, but now let's start putting things in it. Basically, what I wanna do is I wanna put the text in it. That being said, I'm not gonna put both names here as one element because as you can see, we want them to move you know, independently. So that's, I'm, I'm actually gonna put two text elements here. So let's just copy, let's give this actually a style. Let's call this uh, hero name, name, and uh, let's duplicate that. So we have two of them. This one, let's call this Hannah or Nana, sorry, and then Lager, Lagerman. All right, so now to make this kind of like nice, let's make this white. Let's make this uppercase, uppercase. And um, now we don't want them, we want them to be one next to another. So obviously we don't want them to be, you know, display block. Let's turn them into inline display. The other thing though is we don't want them to, we don't want them to be one next to the other. And the reason is that you can see as they move, they move independently and they even overlap one another. So basically that means I want them to be on basically separate layers. And the way that I'm gonna do this is by turning them into um, absolute elements. So now, and let's actually make them aligned to the bottom left corner of the element that we have here. So now you can see they're overlapping each other. Now I wanna, I wanna give them different classes so that we can treat them differently. So the second one, I'm actually gonna add a modifier here. I'm gonna give it last name. And the last name, I'm going to align it. As you can see here, I've aligned them both to the bottom left, but the last name I'll align it to the bottom right. So now we have both of them here and they're aligned to the bottom of the screen as we load, they'll be aligned to the bottom. Now we can scroll through. Um, so now we have the first setup. And now, here's the first challenge. We want them to always fit nicely within this background. So what we wanna do is for the first name, for the, you know, this style will affect both of them, right? Hero name. Instead of giving them a size that's pixel based, I wanna give them a size that's going to be relative. And because the thing that, the thing that actually responds to is the width of the viewport, I'm actually gonna choose from these elements here, I'm gonna choose um, vertical width, right? So based on the width, the, their size is gonna change. And then I'm just gonna look visually, I'm gonna try to make sure that it looks somewhat um, makes sense. Now 10 looks okay, the space between them is a little big, so I'm gonna do, let's do 10.1, maybe 10.2. That looks pretty good, let's see this. Now note, if we're changing the size, now the, the size of the text changes. So we already have a responsive text here, all right? I'm not gonna try to make this too small because even in this website, you know, for the mobile, and they're actually changing the layout here. It doesn't make sense to make it too small. But we have basically the first setup works. We have a responsive text that changes the sizes and it's also aligned basically to the bottom. Actually, it's a little bit, you know, we need to give it a little bit of space. So to give it a little bit of space, let's go here and for the for their wrapper, the align to bottom, let's add a tiny bit of, um, tiny bit of, you know, padding. Um, actually, oh, I see what I didn't do. Because these are, um, I've set them to be absolute, so they're, you know, on their own layers, they're actually set to be relative to the, their parents who's relative. By default, it's the body, but I actually wanna set this to relative. Um, this, this might be a little bit of a, kind of like something that a lot of designers get confused by with the whole relative and absolute kind of things, but I really recommend you master this very basic uh, property because that really allows you to do really crazy and cool things. All right, so now I feel like we have good spacing at the bottom. Um, and now we have the first thing set up. All we wanna do right now is add the interaction. So as we scroll, we want them to resize and we want them to change their alignment to the center alignment. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to our interaction palette and we're gonna add a page trigger and while page is scrolling. So let's call this a new animation. Let's call this 
uh, hero text animation. Hero text animation. All right, let's start with, I'm actually gonna start with the last name because the last name is the thing that going to, we, we want to figure the size of that first. For, uh, also because it's a big, big word and we need to make sure that it fits within the screen. So let's see what we're gonna do with it. The first thing I wanna do is I want to resize it. So let's start by checking it, picking it, and then choosing scale. Now, to begin with, scale is one, right? That's the original size. And let's say that when we get to 30% of the scroll, we're gonna scale again. And this time, let me ch choose 1.5, which is basically increase by 50%. Um, I think that's good, but we'll have to see when it's scrolling um, if it's good. But note what happened here. Now, because I've made this element bigger, it actually goes out of the screen and then we, this, ugly horizontal scroll happens. To fix this, first of all, I'm gonna just gonna save this. I'm gonna go into the top, uh, top container here, right, the long section. I'm actually gonna go here and set that the long section overflow is hidden, meaning even if things get out of this long section, um, we don't wanna see them, right? We, want, we don't want them to create an overflow. And then we can set the width here to 100% of the page. So now, if we go back into the animation, um, even if it's going out, you can't see this right now, but I'm trying to scroll left and right, and now we don't have this horizontal scroll, um, scrolling. All right, so we've scaled it. Let's also now move it. All right, so I actually don't need this 100% scale here as well. I'm gonna delete this. And let's add a move interaction. And move, we want to move it both kind of to the center. So we want to move it along the X axis. And we also want to move it along the Y. And the reason is that you notice as I'm scrolling at the beginning, it doesn't really go up. It only starts to go up, you know, a little bit later on. So in order for that to look like it's sticking to the bottom, actually it has to move down, right? Because otherwise, you know, we're scrolling down everything should move up. So actually we have to move it downward to create that effect of it sticking to the bottom as we move. So I'm gonna use, for both of these interactions, I'm gonna use the vertical uh, width. The, yeah, the, the width, um, I'm gonna start with zero because both of them need to be relative to the width of the screen, right? That's the relative thing that's going to change if the screen size changes. So it starts from zero, zero, and then let's duplicate this and move it here. And then basically I'm just gonna try and figure out what looks kind of centered. Minus 20 looks centered for the X axis, and then I'm going to bring it down perhaps minus 10. Let's, let's preview that and see what happens. Now I'm scrolling. So now you can see it's scaling up, it's moving to the center, and then it's also kind of like, looks like it's going down, right, as we scroll. Perhaps we can actually make the going down even more extreme. Let's make it 15. And then, yeah. And then only when we get here, it kind of stops and starts to move up. Okay, so that is basically the animation for this one. And basically we also have the properties that we understand that we can actually reuse for this one. The only thing that needs to change is that this needs to sit on top of it, right? But it's also gonna need to move in the opposite direction and also need to scale. So one thing I can do is I can start duplicating these. So let's go ahead and duplicate this scale. And the only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do change target and I'm just gonna change the other one, right? And then scale, duplicate, change target, and I'm gonna pick the other one. All right, let's preview that. So it's still not moving, but let's see. Okay, it's scaling up, so that's nice. So now we only need to move it. So let's go ahead into the move. I'm gonna duplicate that. Change target, of course. I'm gonna pick this one. 
And then in the move here, I'm gonna duplicate that and change target into this one. That being said, we don't want it to move into the same space, right? It moved to the left and moved down. And so let's see where it needs to be positioned. So let's try 30 and then go up. Is it aligned? It looks kind of aligned. Let's try this. Now we scroll down and it's aligning. All right, I think we're actually done. Let's save this, let's preview this. And the animation works. And would it work just as perfectly if the screen size was different? Let's see. Yep, it would be completely responsive no matter what the screen size, it would always be a perfect alignment and perfect changing of the screen size and the font would look great no matter what the screen size is. All right, I hope you found this useful. You can see that with just being creative, understanding how to use the responsive and relative sizes and positioning, you can create some really, really cool and neat effect that can win awards for your web design. If this was a little bit too overwhelming or fast for you, of course, make sure you master the fundamentals. Our Webflow Masterclass is a great place to learn that. Make sure you check the link below. Otherwise, we'll have a lot more Webflow tutorials coming your way, so make sure you're subscribed and you like this video so that YouTube knows to show you more videos like this, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.